Today, Owl 7-2, second only to Houston as Taylor Hendricks wins the opening tap and Darius Johnson will get things started for UCF. Knights trying to snap that three-game losing streak against Tulane, South Florida, and then Houston. Owls, meanwhile, have beaten ECU, the same Houston Cougars who were number one in the country at the time, and then South Florida for three in a row as the Knights start with a turnover. This is Hasir Miller, the sophomore from Philly. Played his high school ball at Newman Garetti, a powerhouse. Zach Hicks on the dribble drive. Back-to-back -back turnovers to start, but that was deflected by the Knights, so no shot clock reset as Nick Jordan starts the offense again for the Owls. Skips it for Hicks, got to go with three on the timer. Pulls it up mid-range, missed it off glass, rebounded by Hendricks, the four-star freshman who's been outstanding for UCF this season. This feels like a noon game on a Saturday right now in the middle of conference play, right? Both teams know each other very well, and you're having a hard time getting fluidity on the offensive end. Here's Lahat Chun. Redshirt senior from Senegal. Can't get the scoring started. Rebounded by Kor Jankuc out of South Sudan. So, Mike, in this situation, what's the key to sparking the offense? Go inside early and often. The more that you can get at the rim, the better. John Cooch with the offensive rebound after the miss by Jordan. Miller tees up a three and gets us started. And that's good for this lineup. When you don't have Dunn and Battle in the game to start the game, if you can get offensive rebounds, give yourself second possessions, that's something they did pretty well in that Houston game as well. And the only loss for Houston in conference play was against these Temple Owls. Shun going to work, little baby hook. It's very obvious right now, Temple is shading towards everybody except Chun. They don't mind him having a big night if that means that Hendricks and Johnson don't go off. Yeah, Chun coming off a season-high eight against Houston Wednesday, an 82-71 loss for UCF. But for the second time in as many meetings, they played tight with the Cougars for the majority of that game. As Hicks fires from three, that rattles out another rebound for Hendricks. Taylor Hendricks, the six-time American Conference Rookie of the Week, which ties a conference record with three Memphis Tigers. Johnson probing out to Hendricks, who can shoot. One of their better three-point shooters instead attacks the rim and scores. And Drew, he got that bucket because everybody's worried about his three-point shot. You saw that aggressive closeout. He sees it coming, catch rip, a little ball fake. Gives him the better angle for the drive. He's 39% from downtown this year. He's so good because of his versatility, right, partner? No question about it. A three-level score. You got to worry about his three. He's top five in the American Conference in three-point shooting percentage. Good touch in the mid-range. Big-time athlete around the rim. That's a three-level score. Hicks with two on the timer. Can't bounce at home. Another rebound for Hendricks. He's already got three of those. He's top ten in the American in rebounding as well. And leads the conference in blocks. Just a side note. <laughs> Three from the wing wouldn't go for Ithiel Horton, who's been red hot lately. And it's a one-point UCF lead about three and a half minutes in here. Miller on the step back. Ithiel Horton on his third school. Delaware Pitt, and now UCF recently went over 1,000 career points. Nice entry to Chun. Give the assist to Hendricks as Lahat Chun has four early points. Good sign for UCF when Chun is getting going early. And that's because Michael Durr is out. Their starting center is out with a hand injury. So Chun's had to step up and play his minutes. That three oh. is pure from Hasir Miller, who's got all six for the Owls. He's a Philly kid. Love his game. Coming off that uh, his last game, nine points, four assists. Smooth point guard for the Owls. You see at the top of your screen scores table, Damian Dunn, Caleb Battle, Jamil Reynolds all set to check in after the TV timeout. They are their top three scores. They all come off the pine. Ten to shoot for Lahat Chun, who's been more aggressive lately, and it continues. Six points for Lahat Chun. It's very obvious. They're not going to double Chun. You have to win that one-on-one -on -one battle if you're Temple. They are pressuring all everybody else for UCF and leaving Chun open to operate. Jaleel White hard to the hole, and he is fouled by Chun. He'll shoot the first two free throws when we come back. Almost five minutes. Over 50 points from their bench. Woo! A ridiculous number. That does not happen in college basketball.
And for Temple, if you're just watching Temple for the first time and you're saying, why are your two best scorers coming off the bench? Well, it's working for them. They're 4-0 in conference play. You have two players that are two of the best scorers in the American Conference, and Caleb Battle and Damian Dunn had this unbelievable, unselfish mindset that said, we're just in it for the team. Whatever helps us win, we want to do. So if coming off the bench and giving us an energy spark, we're all over that. That is big time unselfishness from the Temple Owls. Jaleel White made those two free throws on the other side to tie us at eight under ten to shoot for Ithiel Horton. That'll be a goal ten as White went up top to swat it, but count the deuce for Ithiel Horton. And, Mike, that's pretty rare, especially in today's day and age, right? That kind of mindset. No, no question. Unselfishness, it's, it, it is a uh, the Aurora Borealis in college basketball. <laughs> and you're seeing that from the Temple Owls, and you can mock it all you want, but it's working. There's a reason why they're second in the American Conference right now. Their unselfishness has them beating Houston in second place in the American Conference. Aurora Borealis in Orlando. How about that? I've never seen that before. His battle pulls it up. Too strong on the baseline jumper. Here comes Brandon Suggs, one of UCF's best scorers off the bench. Taylor Hendricks from the corner. Left it short for three. There's Jamil Reynolds, the UCF transfer. And speaking of top scorers, he's third on the team. Their other guy in double figures. He also has not started in conference play, but he's been dealing with an injury. This is second game back, and he goes to work. Hendricks got a piece, but he fouled him. We talked with Aaron McKee yesterday at practice about bringing those guys off the bench, and Mikey talked about it, the selflessness of Caleb Battle and Damian Dunn to do whatever the team needs. It really started when Dunn missed their first conference game against East Carolina with a concussion, and I think McKee probably realized, hey, we might have something special. We might have cracked the code. But what's that great line from Remember the Titans, Attitude, Reflect, Leadership, Captain? I mean, this team plays like Aaron McKee coaches. They are even keel, they are under control, and they are selfless. That's Those are the things that Coach Aaron McKee talks about when he talks about the Temple way. What does that big T actually mean? And it always revolves around humility, unselfishness, and toughness. And right now in conference play, Temple is fully embodying that Temple way mindset. Reynolds missed both free throws, only a 63% foul shooter on the year. UCF still by two, six minutes in. Here comes Horton, always looking to score. Got his own, cleaned it up, missed the bunny, but it's put back up and in by Tierno Sila, the freshman from Guinea. Stolen away by Horton, puts it up and in, plus the foul. Ithiel Horton gets the folks on their feet here in Orlando. You're so worried about the three that drives are open because UCF is the best three-point shooting team in the conference. You get plays like that from Horton of after a quick make, you have size, athleticism, and speed to after a point in the paint, you can set up your full core press. That is a big time high IQ play defensively by Ithiel Horton, and we're seeing more of the press right now. 2 2 1 full court. A little 7 0 run here for the Knights. Horton up to a game high seven. Points in the paint, UCF with 14 of their 15, plus the free throw. They have been attacking the basket. Another turnover by the Owls. Horton was fouled by Hasir Miller. That was Jamil Reynolds on both those two plays. Even though Reynolds initially got fouled on the previous possession, it feels like he's trying to do too much, right? He's back playing at UCF for the first time after transferring. And you had those little bit of jitters. You're coming back from injury. You're playing at the school that you first played at. You can let the game come to you, especially as a post player. Work that interior first and take your time. And Reynolds played 45 games for UCF in two years. Sela alone, the big man can really stroke it. Most of his shots this year have come from downtown. 42% on the year, but he missed that one. There's a great box out by his Sear Miller on Ithiel Horton. There's Caleb Battle playing the two men with Damian Dunn. See if the Owls can get those two guys going. Dunn with a nice look. Reynolds swarmed by Knights. He got stuffed by Sela. That was all ball. Under 10 to shoot. 
Miller has a couple threes already. This time steps in and buries it from the mid-range. And that may look like bad defense, but that is a new age type of defensive mentality. I'm not giving up the three. I'm going to run past you so you have to hit a mid-range jumper. I think if you're Johnny Dawkins, you're okay with 15-foot jumpers this afternoon. Orton no looks it for Sela. Good ball movement here for UCF as Suggs had it poked free. Out of bounds off of Ithiel Horton. Temple ball. But even though that's a turnover for UCF, Coach Aaron McKees, I know, is talking to his defense and saying, we are letting the ball get into the paint way too much. Dribble penetration is almost an easy thing for UCF right now. It's one or two passes, get into a gap in the paint, and it's working for the night so far. I want to go back to what you mentioned about the closeout. Running guys off the three-point line because it's just a less efficient shot from the mid-range, right? That, that's why effective field goal percentage is the most important percentage now in the game of basketball is you're worried about how many threes do you shoot per possession. Miller from way downtown. Yeah, effective field goal percentage maybe the first of the four factors. That'll help. Ithiel Horton knocks it down from downtown. Best three-point shooting team in the American Conference, and Ithiel Horton is certainly a part of that. Horton, first player in double figures today. As Miller sends it to the corner for Caleb Battle. He is prolific from outside, but he missed that one. You'd like to see more of that from Miller. Those driving kicks on Horton, that was a heat check. That was maybe the quickest trigger we've seen all season. Too early of a heat check. You gotta hit at least three in a row before you do a heat check. Spoken like a true heat check artist. Absolutely. Miller looking for that three. Now Taylor Hendricks is on him. Dunn with a little space. Damian Dunn defended by Tierno Sila, who's been great around the rim so far. Here comes Suggs. Euro step might have taken an extra step. Hendricks has the follow and the two-hand stuff. Timeout, Aaron McKee. Tough losses to Kansas State, TCU, Iowa State, all ranked, and obviously the Big 12 best basketball conference in the country. How important is that game for the Jayhawks? People think the sky is falling. They're 16 and 4. They're fine. Important win for the Jayhawks. Yeah, they've lost three games against three really good teams. Pretty much everyone in the Big, Big 12 is really good. You see here UCF by 10, a 12-2 spurt. Zach Hicks cannot break the drought for the Owls. They haven't scored in over two minutes. Only made one field goal in about six minutes. Brandon Suggs goes to work. Hicks denied it from behind, and that's going the other way. Temple ball. And that's a gift for Temple, because Temple's transition defense has not been locked in this afternoon. Yeah, six fast break points for UCF already. What do you think of this pressure here? This is really just fake pressure. It, it, it's just a, trying to force you to slow you down. There's 17 seconds before you get into your offense. Here's Damian Dunn, already 10 on the timer. Temple is content to slow things down. Nice pass. Bounce pass to Jameel Reynolds, who waits and scores, and the former UCF Knight is on the board at his old home. We talk about Damian Dunn scoring all the time, but he's one of the more underrated passers on this Temple roster. That was a smooth dime. Suggs loves that Euro, knocked away by Hicks, but he's called for the foul. First foul against Zach Hicks. Brandon Suggs will head to the stripe, a 75% foul shooter for Johnny Dawkins. UCF Knights, a guy who engineered a big time turnaround for them in his first season. From 12 wins to 24 wins, now in year seven. Brandon Suggs, the East Carolina transfer, spent three years with the Pirates. Rob Lanier getting some extra face time there. SMU coach, he's everywhere. When you're trying to build a program, you got to be, you know, you got to be out there marketing your school. It's all about recruiting. Still a 10-point edge for UCF after Suggs made them both. Temple's last trip where Reynolds scored that layup. That was their first points in the paint of the afternoon. As Hicks leaves the runner short. 
And out of bounds against Hicks, it's UCF ball. This is an interesting lineup offensively for UCF. We've got Darius Johnson, Tanner Hendricks, and Ithiel Horton on the bench. Jalen Young's in at point guard. Your best scorer on the floor is C.J. Kelly for UCF. Don't be surprised if they look to run initial action here in their half-court set for C.J. Kelly. He's in the corner at the top of your screen now. Here's Ty M. Freeman. It's great defense. Jaleel White with the rebound starts it with Damian Dunn. White, lefty scoop. No, look at Reynolds. Way up Whoa. top. Oh, that's a man's attack for Reynolds. You think he's excited to be back playing against his old team? Two years ago, Kel the head coach of Houston, Kelvin Sampson, called Jamil Reynolds one of the biggest problems in the American Conference in the next couple of years that we're going to have to deal with after he put in a monster performance at Houston two years ago while he was at UCF. Reynolds is a real talent. June missed the turnaround. Rebounded by Caleb Battle. Now Reynolds played three times against Temple when he was with UCF. Now wearing the cherry red. Back to work in the post. Had it poked free. And here come the Knights with C.J. Kelly. Freeman steps in. Nice feed. Suggs puts it home. Again, transition defense for Temple. It's not locked in right now. If you're UCF, even after rebounds, after misses, I would look to continue to push. Because for whatever reason, Temple's half-court defense is solid when they get set. But in transition, they are not connected. Battle. No Tough. hesitation. Caleb Battle is on the board. Fourth in scoring the American Conference. Just can hurt you in so many ways. Above 17 points per game. Last year he was the top scorer in the league before he went down seven games in with a foot injury. Above 21 per game. Nice attack by Jalen Young. He is fouled and he will shoot. Is yeah. elite, right? And he's 53 and 48? And 80. Wow. Jalen Young at the free throw line for UCF. By the way, battle this year, 40% from the field, 33 from downtown, and 86 from the free throw line. Still filling it up. You talked about Temple's wanting to slow it down, and, and one of the ways they like to slow it down is getting to the free throw line, and it helps that your two best scorers, Battle and Dunn, are both top five in the American Conference in free throw shooting percentage. They both shoot over 85% from the free throw line. And they both get there a lot, too. No and foul that hit. time does not matter. And Caleb Battle hit. sticks it. That was a ridiculous body control off the bounce from Battle. Good Playing defense, good defense here too. out of bounds off UCF. See if there's a foul here. Looked like there, and live there was a lot of contact. Now, if you're Battle. I understand why that wasn't called live now. When we saw it, we had kind of an odd angle with Jalen Young giving him a little arm bar there. But if you're battle, you have to flail a little bit. As oh, soon as an sure. arm bar hits you in your stomach as you're going up for a shot, you've got to sell a nice back door. Back door, extra pass, Jordan feeds it inside. White up and under, got it, plus the foul. That was the best half-court offense of possession for the Temple Owls. The ball goes baseline, driving kick, another shot at attacking to, attacking the paint. White with a tough finish. Owls have made their last four shots. And Jaleel White, the 66% foul shooter, makes it a two-point game. Darius Johnson back in there for UCF. Horton and Hendricks are in there as well. Little horn set. They get it to Hendricks, the fabulous freshman who can do it all. That time, though, his entry pass was deflected and taken away by the Owls. Temple hasn't led since it was 3-2. Reynolds down low always looking to put it up. He does and he's fouled And that for Jamil Reynolds was a much better job of catching gathering staying under control 
and waiting for the right opportunity instead of being overly aggressive and just going. Sometimes you have to just go as a post player, but other times you need to catch and gather because that was a kind of a difficult and awkward angled pass. Smart play by Jamil Reynolds of catching and gathering. That's two fouls on Lahat Chun. As Reynolds swishes the first free throw. Remember, only a 63% foul shooter this year. Returned recently from a month and a half absence in their last game against South Florida. He started their first 11 games before that thumb injury. And a timeout, Johnny Dawkins and UCF. Top type angle. This is a good matchup right here. Two really strong point guards. As they, they're switching dribble handoffs right now on the, on the dribble weave. Sela corrals it. Wild fadeaway no. And here comes Sasir Miller. UCF, one of the best defensive teams in the league. 54th in the country per Ken Palm in efficiency on this side. Battle into a wall of defenders. Out to Miller for three. Off the heel, Reynolds tapped it out. Jordan in there too. Battle has it. Goes right to the rack and scores plus one. And just like in the first 10 minutes of this half of UCF getting into the paint at will, it's now Temple that is getting into the paint whenever they want to. Their dribble penetration, their offensive rebounding, their driving and kicking. They've got a much better flow in the half court in these last about seven minutes. Dawkins will make the substitution. Suggs comes in for Tierno Sela as the Knights go a little smaller. And Taylor Hendricks will play the five for Johnny Dawkins and the Knights here. Seems like Caleb Battle is in a groove after coming off the bench. Up to nine points now to lead the Owls. I love Battle's free throw rhythm. He takes that practice shot. He keeps the ball in his left hand. He takes his right hand. He does that practice shot with his right hand. I used to do that for years. It was kind of like you got an extra shot right before you shoot it. Mentally, you're thinking about the ball go in. I love seeing that. I remember when Steve Nash used to do that. Yeah, that's where I got it from. Really? Yeah, I, I stole it. All great artists steal from other great <laughs> artists. And uh, I, by no means am I uh, remotely comparing myself to Steve Nash. That's what I heard. I, I, I know that's not going to go away anytime soon. So I'm apologizing to my audience. Please. <laughs> Loose ball taken away by Temple for a moment. They're going to rule that a kickball against Jaleel White, two and Cherry Red. And he'll stay here with UCF with 20 to shoot. This is typical American Conference play. Ball goes to the floor. Everybody's diving for it. White took a shot. He was grabbing his left arm after he came up from that. Looked like he took a shot when he fell down on the floor. Speaking of Steve Nash, he's a really good soccer player. That was almost a nice soccer move by Jaleel White. Did something with the ball on his feet there. It's, that's a banked-in three that will count just the same. C.J. Kelly gets himself involved with his first three points. Knights' first field goal in three minutes and 15 seconds. They're back out in front by one. Quick hands from Darius Johnson. What a save. Johnson, will he get rewarded? Rebounded by Core John Cooch of Temple. Darius Johnson still scoreless. That was his first field goal attempt. Foul on the deck against the Knights. We got a one point. <laughs> Pretty strong. <laughs> Don't uh, hide that in a bushel basket, my friend. Under four minutes to play here in the first half. UCF by one. Drew Carter, Mike O'Donnell, glad to be back with you at Edition Financial Arena. As Damian Dunn with a professional move just off the heel and Taylor Hendricks bobbles and then corrals the rebound for UCF. He's got five boards today. This is where you need some ball screen action for UCF. Right on cue. Good help defense by Miller. Good tag by Hasir Miller on the baseline weak side. Knights with 10 to shoot now. 
Darius Johnson skips it. Short corner for Brandon Suggs, who missed everything on the jumper. So Brandon Suggs was wide open. That's good defense by Temple. A mid-range baseline jumper is what you want to live with versus this UCF offense. The Temple offense has found a nice little groove here. Their first 12 points came from outside the paint. They've been attacking now. That time, too much in attack mode for Jaleel White as he's called for the offensive foul. Brandon Suggs is going to give you a charge virtually every single game. He's the ultimate glue guy for UCF. And everybody's like, what does a glue guy actually mean? Can you impact winning without the basketball? Can you impact winning without scoring? That's exactly the kind of player that Brandon Suggs is when you're talking about what is a glue guy. Great play by Hasir Miller as Temple came with a full court press, knocked it out of bounds off UCF, so it stays on this side. Miller's 11th in the American Conference in steals per game, and you, if you counted deflections as an official stat, he'd be top 10 for sure. Really the unsung hero of this backcourt. We talked a lot about battle done, but Miller's in there as well. As Jameel Reynolds turns and scores, that was buttery soft. We've seen the physicality of a ferocious dunk off a drop step from Reynolds, and we've seen the baby step hook jumper that was feathery. Good defense. Wow, that, that is big time. Orton found some space but couldn't score. Caleb Battle was all over it. That was talking about moving your feet, shuffling, keeping your hands away from the offensive player. They're going right back at him. He, he's going right back at Hendricks. Ooh, battle. Looked like he was an Eagles wide receiver on the sideline there, keeping it in play. Gets it to Reynolds, turns and scores again. Jamil Reynolds is starting to feel it in his old arena. Johnson trapped down low, throws it away into the backcourt. That'll be a UCF turnover. And Temple will take over, up by three with under two to play in the first half. Jamil Reynolds is what you call a problem in the post because he's got a baby hook and he also is patient and physical enough with his feet and his body to move away from the defense. We've seen the dunk, we've seen the baby hook, we've seen the good catch and gather. When he's healthy, Reynolds is a problem in the low post. Yeah, Reynolds scored double figures in seven of his first 11 with Temple, then went down with a thumb injury that forced him to miss about a month and a half. This is just his second game back. Damian Dunn from the wing puts it home for three. Yeah, the offense is clicking for Temple. That was baseline drive, kick, extra pass, hockey assist type basketball. The Owls playing with great tempo on the offensive end. And the Temple fans who made the trip to Orlando are feeling it now. It's a 17-3 run for the Owls. Offense and defense, they are high energy at the moment. Offensive foul against Jalen Young. Caliph Battle draws it. We talked a lot about Caliph Battle's offense, and for good reason. But he had two defensive possessions in this first half that were outstanding. This is the second one. Getting to a spot, sliding your feet, taking it in the chest. Come on, how can you not love that? UCF with five turnovers in the last six minutes. A turnover-prone team. That was deflected, so Battle can track it down. And the Owls that keep possession. That should be backcourt. They said it was deflected by UCF. Battle hangs and scores! Caleb Battle off the window! How did he make that? How did he stay up that long? That's against the best shot blocker in the American Conference, too. He was up in orbit for a while. That's a space pun here in Orlando. No reaction. That's fair. Under 10 to shoot for UCF. My thoughts are in a vacuum right now. <laughs> Battle again hits the deck. Suggs denied. Oh, they call a foul on Reynolds. This play from Battle is what you call finishing wide. As you say, when he pulls the ball out wide from his body, 
it is hard to block because you have to wait and plus the hang time makes it even not just hard to guard but such a difficult finish I don't know if there, there may not be more than 10 guys in college basketball that can consistently make that kind of play around the rim that was absurd by Caleb Battle and the reason it was so important Mike to, to finish wide as you say is the leading shot blocker in the league Taylor Hendricks was right there you have to and Outside of being the leading shot blocker, Taylor Hendricks forces you to take shots you don't practice. But Battle is such a gifted offensive talent that he can use his body by getting wide and giving himself a better angle for a bucket. Nine times out of ten, any other player, that's getting sent into the third row. Shot clock is off. Temple can hold for one. A 19-4 run over the last six and a half minutes for the Owls. Five to go. Battle, step back over Hendricks, left that one short, and that's how the first half will come to a close. What a finish to the first half for Temple. It's always a little jarring to see the top two scorers for a team starting on the bench, plus Damian Dunn, who's above 15 points per game on the season, but that is Temple's M.O. As Zach Hicks starts with a three and missed it short, Taylor Hendricks, another rebound for UCF. The outstanding freshman has seven boards so far. Darius Johnson back in there for UCF. Made his return in their last game against Houston after missing four. Here's C.J. Kelly. Matched up with Nick Jordan. Nice move, got some space, fouled, and he will shoot two. That's exactly what UCF was doing at the start of the game, where they were in attack mode trying to get into the paint. Clearly, Coach Johnny Dawkins says, we need more continuity on the offensive end. So he comes out and runs the set immediately to get C.J. Kelly going downhill to try to get into the paint. And it's really no huge secret in basketball. Just players need to understand the more that you can get the ball to the free throw line or inside the free throw line off the bounce, team's efficiency on offense increases. Your field goal percentage, chances of getting fouled, uh, getting assists, everything goes up the more that you can get the ball into the paint. Those were Kelly's first two free throw attempts of the afternoon. Leads the teams in attempts and makes this year above 80% on the season. Where does Temple generate offense without those three guys on the floor? Well, I usually like not something like that. I usually like to see Miller in ball screen action. I think Miller does a really nice job orchestrating the ball screens. Johnson again probing, knocked out of bounds by Hasir Miller. 22 on the timer, as you see. Jamil Reynolds, above 10 points per game this year. Caleb Battle, 17 points per game. And Damian Dunn not on the bench right now because he just checked in, averaging above 15 this season. When you watch Temple's defense, anytime Darius Johnson drives, there seems to be a wall around. Anytime he's driving baseline, there's three or four Temple players forcing him to make a difficult pass. Temple hasn't done that with any other player for UCF. You might say it's a parliament of owls in there as Cora John Cooch takes it away. Just tremendous. I can't even spell parliament. That's why you're smarter <laughs> than me, buddy. Damian Dunn for three. Out to Miller. Gets it to Hicks for the triple. And Hicks can shoot that. He is statistically their best three-point shooter at 35%. Yeah, most of his shots come from outside the arc. 145 threes coming in, just 39 twos. Ezithiel Horton missed the layup and a foul against UCF. And look out, here we go. It was Lahat conference play. Double foul, shake hands, play on, let's go. Now, it, it all ends up being peachy keen, but it was the third personal foul against Lahat Chun, zero and white. So keep an eye on that. Remember, no Michael Durr or C.J. Walker for UCF. Thin in the front court. Damian Dunn going to work, and he is fouled by C.J. Kelly. He's got a lot of pro game in his game. You'll see him in the pick and roll. You'll see him catch and shoot from three. But Dunn is a bigger, stronger perimeter guard. And he'll put you in the post, be patient, and he'll get wide, use his ball fakes. He's got a lot of pro skill in his game. The great free throw shooter above 86% on the season. Tops on the team and top five in the conference. He's second in the league in free throws made and attempted. Only Kendrick Davis 
is above him on those leaderboards, and he splits them. He's up to four points today. The American actually has three players inside of top 20 in the nation for made free throws. You mentioned Damian Dunn, and you also have Kendrick Davis, like you said, and Jalen Forbes of Tulane. It's a coach's dream. It's one of the most underappreciated skill sets in the game, the ability to draw fouls. Kelly thought he drew one there, but he scored nonetheless. No question. Certainly some contact on that paint attack from Kelly. That was UCF's first bucket in seven full minutes. And they only trail by seven. Hicks bounces it. Dunn against Hendricks. Dunn with a double team. Extra feed from Miller. Here's Jaleel White with five on the timer. Hicks has to go. Creates space. Missed it. Rebounded by Ethiel Horton. Maybe an offensive foul there. Here comes Horton. Bumped. Scores. They're letting him play now, and Ithiel Horton takes advantage. And as a player, you have to adjust. You can't be hoping you're going to get a call. You know the contact is going to be there, and the refs are calling it even. I don't, it doesn't matter if they're not calling a lot of fouls or calling a lot of fouls, as long as they're consistent, and they are. Taken away by the Knights. Here comes Horton in transition. Can't hit it with the off left hand. Rebounded by John Cooch. Now three on two for the Alps. Here comes Miller right through the teeth of the defense and lays it home. Miller in double figures with 10. Orton the only knight with 10. A lot of creation on the floor for UCF with Johnson, Kelly, Horton, Hendricks, and Chune. Horton on the drive, out of bounds off of him, Temple Ball. This is where, if you're the point guard for either UCF or Temple, it needs to be having a new mindset of, we got to run some good action here. Because you know, even though Temple got a couple buckets and, and they're, they're, they're getting up and down, it feels as if when you're on the road, a little helter-skelter, settle down, run your offense, work the shot clock. That's where Temple basketball is at its best. That's how they beat Houston, right? 56-55. Coach McKee told us we wanted a grinding game, and they were exactly that against Houston. Jamil Reynolds traveled. It's a seven point over into this game. The perimeter defense for Temple has been stout this afternoon. And really, one of the best things that Temple's done in this game is converting turnovers into points. UCF has nine turnovers, and Temple has converted four... Yeah, into those nine turnovers into 14 points this afternoon. Owls by seven. Caleb Battle pulls the trigger. A little strong. C.J. Kelly the rebound. 42-35 coming up on five minutes into the second half here. C.J. Kelly kicks it out. Suggs all alone for three. UCF trims it to four. 42-38. Nick Jordan with it now for Temple. He has been quiet today, still scoreless. Jamil Reynolds and Damian Dunn run the two-man. Dunn, so patient, so crafty. Hendricks the rebound. Lahat Shun got in the way of that pass from Darius Johnson. Just over five minutes into the second half. Temple 42, UCF 38. Johnson for three. Bullseye! Darius Johnson is on the board. It's a one-point game here at Edition Financial Arena. Dunn calls for the screen from Reynolds. Skips it. Hasir Miller on the blow-by. Mid-range jump shot is pure. That's the second mid-range jumper Miller has ripped in the half court. He is such a sound player on both ends of the floor. Temple by three, 14-10 to play in the second half. Darius Johnson was wide open twice, and they missed him. Lahat Chun. Fancy footwork leads to a foul against Jamil Reynolds, and Chun will shoot the deuce. 
It's the best three-point shooting team in the American Conference for a reason. Everybody can light it up for three for UCF. We haven't seen this kind of ball movement from the Knights in this game. You feel a little bit of continuity starting to develop for this UCF offense. Yeah, UCF first in the league in three-point percentage at 36. Second in makes only Cincinnati. Averages more. Knights average almost nine triples per game. They're up to four today as Lahat Chun makes it a two-point game with Jalen Young coming in for C.J. Kelly. The offense for Lahat Chun has gotten better as the season's progressed. He's got seven points this afternoon. Make that eight. Coming off a game at Houston in which he had eight points as well. Good sign for UCF when you had a guy like your starting center, Michael Durr, still out with injury. Now, last time out, Shun set a season high with those eight points. He's tied it today with 14 minutes to play. Temple by one, 44-43. Miller flies off the handoff. Battle from the corner. Shun, quick hands. Johnson saves it to the big man who saves it to Jalen Young. Johnson, one-on-one -on -one with battle. What a move and what a finish. The Knights take the lead. Their first since it was 25-24 with six minutes to play in the first half. Timeout, Aaron McKee. Knights have made three shots in a row. The three-point line. It's the best three-point shooting team in the American Conference. And they're up one after being down multiple possessions because the three ball is the thing that got them back into it. Have to adjust if you're Temple defensively. Damian Dunn missed the short jumper, rebounded by Jaleel White, out to Hasir Miller. Man, that's been his bread and butter all day. That one rattles out. Dunn, the offensive rebound, knocked away by Johnson, out of bounds off of Temple. Uncharacteristically, Temple has been great on the offensive glass. Ooh, a little close oh, there. I'm oh, not oh, sure. 50-50 play. Yeah. Bit of a bang bang call. Mentioned UCF shooting from downtown. They're two for two from distance in the second half. Suggs missed it from in close. Rebounded by White. Up ahead, two on Throw one. Miller battle. Whoa! He almost sucked the life right out of Edition Financial Arena. Instead, out of bounds. He almost had that. If Battle would have converted that, I would have left. <laughs> I, I would have left. That would have been. Insane! That would have been a, an and one type. The game is over. June, bit of a wild lefty hook. Remember when the air up there would throw down a dunk so nasty that they would just have to end the game? Absolutely. All time great right there. UCF holding on to that one point lead. Eight minutes into the second half. White double team might have caught Chun with an elbow to the, the face. face, and then White went down on top of Chun. So we'll have to clean this up. Basketball play, and really, ultimately, when you're talking excessive contact, what the referees are going to look for is they're going to they're look for a non-basketball movement, a non-basketball play, not a legitimate play on the ball, excessive or unnecessary. To me, that's a normal basketball play, so we play on. I think it's a great no-call by the referees. So no foul at all against White. UCF comes right back and scores as Taylor Hendricks cleans up the miss. Who had been really quiet for the majority of this game. Yeah, only points three and four for Hendricks. Contributing in other ways, though, he does have 11 rebounds and a couple assists. Hendricks, their leading scorer, above 14 points per game. Caleb Battle. Nice feed. Nick Jordan throws it down. It's the most underappreciated thing about Battle's game, his ability to get his teammates involved. That's when I think he's at his best, not just scoring, but facilitating as well. Jordan is on the board, his first deuce. Battle's third assist. Hendricks whips it, skip across to Suggs, gets it right back. Hendricks going to work, Jordan swiped it away, but not before a foul on the deck called against White. Watch that pass from Battle. Draws two defenders. Throws it just quickly over the top. Excuse me. He draws three Knight defenders and makes the right basketball play. 
he will regularly see double, triple teams anytime he gets near the paint area because of how prolific of a scorer he is. And when he's looking to make the right basketball play, he's virtually unstoppable. He had so many nights around him, he almost looked like King Arthur at the round table. Oh, man. That's just, it's not good. It's just not good. <laughs> Thanks for the encouragement, partner. That is the most negative thing I've said in 2023, and I'm glad it was with you, my friend. Usually I'm the one with the dose of negativity, and speaking of that, 0 for 2 at the line for Taylor Hendricks, a really good free throw shooter above 80% this season. Coming up on the midway point of the second half, Caleb Battle had it poked free and collected by Lahat Chun under the basket. If I was Darius Johnson, I'd, I'd go right back to Taylor Hendricks here. You get the sense that he has a renewed energy on the offensive end. You got to feed the big fella when he's rolling. That was deflected into the backcourt. Jalen Young sets it up. Chun shoveled it out for Johnson. Good tag by Dunn on the baseline. Johnson, nice move, missed it, Suggs, the offensive rebound, and he resets it. Blue guy extraordinaire. Can you impact winning without scoring? That's what Brandon Suggs does. UCF, you'll notice, plays at a pretty slow tempo. We're under five on the shot clock again. Johnson for three. Oh, almost had the home roll. Here comes Temple. They have struggled offensively in the second half. Just four made field goals and seven turnovers. Remember, they led by seven at halftime. White with space. Jaleel White has not made a three all season. 0 for 15 coming in now, 0 for 1 today. As Jalen Young goes to the hole and scores. We call that knifing through the lane. And that's something that Jalen Young does really well. When he keeps it simple and he tries to find the right angle to drive, that's when he excels. Young's had a bit of a topsy-turvy redshirt sophomore year, the transfer on his third school. He's been starting at times in place of the injured Johnson, now coming off the bench again. Damian Dunn. That's Never so in a hurry. Drew, that's so good. And it may look easy. It's not. When your back is to the basket and you have to turn, spin, and hit that mid-range jumper. Jordan-esque in terms of execution. Well, that is great defense on Taylor Hendricks. And they can back off Jalen Young and almost act as a double team because he's not a three-point threat. More great defense from Temple. Suggs through two owls. Hicks takes it away. A chance on the run out for battle. Fouled by Johnson. You could see it in Battle's eyes all the way down the court. He knows he's attacking to get fouled. Semi-transition, UCF is backpedaling. You have more control going forward than the defense does going backward. It's a simple, easy way to think about how to draw fouls in semi-transition. Caleb Battle, one of the best free throw shooters in the country, 86% coming in. He's two for two today. Younger brother of the Syracuse great Tyus Battle. I know a lot of Orange fans thought young Caliph might come to Syracuse as well. Instead, he started his career at Butler, transferred to Temple, and he has been a rock star for the Owls. Oh, did you go to Syracuse, Drew? I know a few people who did. Most of them sit in this chair when they come to Addition yeah. Financial Arena. Oh, I had no idea. Congratulations. <laughs> Temple back in front. We've got a back and forth affair here with eight minutes to play. Lahat Chun, what a move for Lahat Chun. If you're wondering if that's normal for Lahat Chun, <laughs> it, it's not. He's been terrific this afternoon for UCF. Ten points for the Knights. A season high for Chun. Miller's got such a tight handle on the ball. He's just, oh, you always feel like it's safe when the ball's in his hands. Battle for three. At all. He yeah, lost he knew his it. follow through, yeah. He knew it. Yep. Mismatch in the post. Johnson from way outside. Reynolds the rebound. 
had Lahat Chun wide open in a mismatch in ISO post situation, and they threw it away from him. Chun's kind of feasting today. Miller found some open space in the lane, missed the runner. Here comes Johnson for UCF with seven minutes to go. Knights trying to snap a three-game losing streak. Owls trying to win their fourth straight. June to the basket. He is fouled. Bahat. Before Lahat Chun's free throw attempts. Our crew chief, Garrick Shannon, making sure everyone's good to go. Lahat Chun out of Dakar, Senegal. The latest in what's become a bit of a pipeline from Senegal to this UCF basketball program. Mabadou Njai is on Johnny Dawkins' staff. He was the first Senegalese player ever drafted in the NBA. There's Mamadou. Might remember Taco Fall. How could you forget? Played for UCF. Last year, Czech Bakajan, also from Dakar. And now Lahat Chun, the latest in the line after four years at Utah, transferred to UCF. And Mamadou Njai is a real mentor for him. Well, he's a legend in Senegal. Every player that wants to play in the NBA that comes out of Senegal or college basketball all knows Mamadou Njai's name. And he is truly a mentor for so many players and uh, just done an unbelievable job at a grassroots level, especially his brother on building that academy in Senegal. Yeah, Mamadou's brother, Ibrahima, started the Flying Star Academy to give guys opportunities to come to the States and play college hoops. And Lahat Chun is playing his best game of the season now, maybe a little too aggressive that time. All square at 52, approaching six minutes to play. Hasir Miller. Looked at a deep three, now on the attack. Picked up his dribble in the lane. Hicks is a dangerous shooter, and he snipes it from the corner. Top five in the American in made threes. Zach Hicks, catch and shoot at 35%. Smooth. Eighth lead change this afternoon. Young, nice bounce pass. Darius Johnson kicks it, corner. Taylor Hendricks for three, way too strong. Miller corrals the rebound for Temple. You don't see Hendricks miss by that much that often. A 39% three-point shooter. Jamil Reynolds has been feasting down low today. That time taken away by Chun. Uh, that was a great early help by Taylor Hendricks. And rewards on the other end. Lots of contact. No whistle stays here. UCF ball. Watch this double team, oh, excuse me, as we're gonna get a look at this foul. Not a lot of contact, actually. To me, that's a play on. There's a quick double team by Taylor Hendricks. One thing that NBA scouts love about his game is he can guard the perimeter, but on the interior, he has a great knack for playing and walling up in the post without fouling. Very rarely will you see Taylor Hendricks in foul trouble. So no foul. That time, shot clock now at 15 for C.J. Kelly. June was open, calling for it. Kelly couldn't find him. Deflected by Damian Dunn is what the officials say. And Dunn was not sure about that. He thought Ithiel Horton tapped it last. Still seven on the timer for the Knights. As Garrick Shannon, the crew chief, crew chief consults with the other officials. I could see some finger movement on there from Battle. Well, Battle definitely touched it, but did Horton touch it? That's the question. Five to shoot for Jalen Young. Now two. Didn't see it. June didn't get it off. Before the shot clock violation, though, a foul against Temple on the floor. And the coaching staff for Temple couldn't believe it. Coach Aaron McKee actually had to turn around and say, guys, calm down, calm down. They called it on 15, Cor Jankuch. You could see two hands go in the back of Chun, but it's been a pretty physical game. That was close, Drew. That was really close. 
Under five to play, Suggs attacking, and he's fouled. And that's the seventh against Temple. It goes against Jaleel White. It's his third. Check that six fouls against the Owls, but the Knights now in the bonus, shooting one and one. It was a shooting foul, though, so Suggs to the stripe. Seventy-five percent this season, the ECU transfer, Brandon Suggs. UCF has needed the offensive output from Brandon Suggs. He's got nine points in this game. He's coming off a previous game where he only played 16 minutes against Houston and only had two points. A big response from Brandon Suggs. It just gives him his tenth point this afternoon. Three nights in double figures. Suggs joins Chune and Horton. Back to a one-point game as Miller breaks the light pressure. Caleb Battle, quick trigger. Horton takes a look. Will they push? Horton, nice cross. June slipped the screen. Young goes to the wing for Suggs. Across the court to Horton. Here's C.J. Kelly. One more Suggs. Good ball movement. No one took the shot, and a foul is called against poor John Cooch of Temple. UCF shooting one and one. That was a really good defensive effort from Temple. You had multiple tag extra helping opportunities by the Owls. Good closeouts. It was good ball moved by UCF. It's just one of those bailout fouls as a coach. You look at what are you doing? You got to cut off the baseline. One and one for Suggs, who's five for six today. Aaron McKee has Caleb Battle and Jamil Reynolds sitting right now. Two of their top scorers. Suggs makes them both, and UCF is back in front. There's Jordan on your right, Reynolds on your left, Caleb Battle sitting next to the coaches, a few seats over. Damian Dunn's show for Temple with four minutes to play. That should be an offensive foul on Miller. That was a hook. Again, no call as Miller shoots, and he's fouled. Jalen Young tried to drop to that conversation so important for a UCF resume Asir Miller missed the first free throw an 84% free throw shooter this season Goes one for two. The Philly native has been tremendous today with 13 points. Tied for a team high with Caleb Battle, who is back out there, along with Damian Dunn, Jaleel White, and Cora Jankuc. Ithiel Horton matched up now with Jaleel White. Horton always looking for a shot. That one won't rattle in off the glass. Rebounded by White. Here comes Damian Dunn. Dunn's been quiet by his standards today. Averages 15 for the season, only six points today. And this is what Temple could do really well. Slow it down, run their offense, control the pace. Miller. Caleb Battle. Gallivanting through the lane and spinning it home. It's a smart play by Battle because he attacks Taylor Hendricks at the same angle that Taylor Hendricks was closing out as. I go faster forward than you do backwards. That's the mentality as a great score. That was big time by battle. You see UCF has not made a bucket in over five minutes. They've got their shot makers and creators on the floor now, including Ithiel Horton, called for the offensive foul. The UCF bench doesn't like it. Do we have a little hook? Yeah, I got a little bit, boy. We, we don't have Dunn, a little hook. We have a Dunn, big one. But Dunn sells it really well. 
Now, in fairness to UCF, it did look like Asir Miller did the same exact thing on this side of the 100%, floor. 100%, and it was a missed call. Absolutely. It's so hard to see. So the Knights' offensive struggles continue, and it's a two-point game with two and a half to go. Into the savvy hands of Caleb Battle. What a look. Jamil Reynolds traveled with it before he went up to try to detonate on the rim. It was a really good play by Caleb Battle. Attacking on the swing. A late closeout by C.J. Kelly. Draws two for the kick. A little too happy with the feet. One, two, three, and four. Oh. <laughs> Almost hit Mambo number five there as Johnny Dawkins calls timeout with 2.20 to play. Do offensively here if you're the Knights. Ball screen with Darius Johnson and Taylor Hendricks. That's what they like to do in situations like this. And it looks like they're actually going to space Taylor Hendricks and go with Chu. Chu does not set the screen. Instead, they go off ball for C.J. Kelly, who threw it right to Damian Dunn. Well, they went for a fake ball screen into a pin down for Kelly. And Kelly just throws it away. That's the 12th turnover for UCF compared to 15 for Temple. Damian Dunn gets to his spot, rises, left it short, shooting the rebound. Only his third board today to go with his season-high 11 points. Sub two minutes, Temple by two. Kelly lefty rolls it home. That's the Knights' first made field goal since the eight-minute mark. Six and a half minutes without one. Kelly ties it at 58. Dunn walking into the paint, and he scores. Shifty, patient, under control. That is Damian Dunn basketball right there, folks. Low-scoring affair here. 118 combined points. Temple by two with under a minute to play now. Well, they are trying to attack Caleb Battle every single time. And Battle takes it away. One on one with Darius Johnson. Battle can't hit it. Put up back and in by Jaleel White. But before the bucket, a foul called against Johnson on the initial drive. This is transition offense for Temple and watch battle see his eyes he's not just looking at the rim he's looking at the defender because he's trying to time up how he's going to get fouled that's why he's one of the best in the country at drawing fouls that's one where it'd be nice if it were like football and you could decline a penalty because Jaleel White followed it up and scored but battle a pretty good option at the free throw line 86 percent this season and he's perfect today, four for four. <laughs> 17 for Caleb Battle. Again. Kelly against Caleb Battle. I don't think it's going to be three times in a row with that. Probably going to get more ball screen action as... Little ISO here as Hendricks pops out. They cleared it out for Darius Johnson, who went to the hole and drew the foul against Hasir Miller. So Coach Johnny Dawkins has decided that the ball screen offense has not been working for UCF in this game. So they go to a clear out for Darius Johnson, who is very gifted at drawing fouls. It's one of the best things about his game is everybody talks about his size and strength, but he has underrated speed as well to, to complement his strength and size. Zach Hicks back in there for Temple, along with Nick Jordan taking White and John Koosh. Darius Johnson above 90% from the line this year. Makes them both. It's a two-point game. Timeout UCF. Free throw line. Hendricks guards the inbounder. Nick Jordan gets it to Damian Dunn. Double comes from the Knights. Jordan, look out. Here comes Darius Johnson from behind. Bounces it to Hasir Miller, who'll slow it down. I think it's what you want for UCF. You don't foul. You cause some confusion. Look up at the clock. They're going to take their time and take it down. I thought that's exactly what you need to happen. 
Eight second difference, shot and game clock. Dangerous by Darius Johnson, almost got a foul. Had to make a contested catch. Shot clock's under five. This is where Damian Dunn thrives. Is it game time? He lost it. Lahat June to the deck. UCF has a timeout, they haven't used it. Darius Johnson to the hole, missed it, but he's fouled. And Darius Johnson can tie this game at the line. What a sequence of events from defense to offense. And Darius Johnson, I'm I know you said that the timeout could have been called, but that was Damian Dunn just losing his cool and the basketball. Darius Johnson, head up. He knows he's going to attack. No timeout needed there. You like Darius Johnson going one-on-one -on -one against Hicks in the open floor if you're Johnny Dawkins. You're not going to get a better scenario than that. No oh, he to missed the attack. free throw. Darius Johnson was two of two before that. It's what... certainly possible. You got the you got one of the best rebounders in the country yet. They're going to try to miss it on purpose. It was a moon ball. Jaleel White back up. Johnson down. got it back, and he is fouled. What a play by Darius Johnson. He missed it perfectly. Got his own and drew two more shot attempts. An impossible situation here in Orlando. This almost never happens. An intentional miss by going high off the rim. Usually you see most players try to almost shot put it at the rim. What a play by Darius Johnson. Almost as if he's practiced that before. Johnson earned himself another chance. He cashes in on the first. Those two missed free throws, by the way, only his fourth and fifth of the year came in at 91%. He ties it at 62. No timeouts for the Owls. Dunn has to heave it. Let's oh. play a little more. Taylor Hendricks and the former UCF Knight Jamil Reynolds on the tap. And Darius Johnson at the controls for the Knights. Trying to snap a three-game losing streak. Owls have won three in a row. They have not lost a road game in conference play this season. 4-0. Lahat June threw the body of Reynolds. Sounded like there was a whistle. I thought so too, but no call. Johnson steps back in the corner. What? Have you ever seen that? He banked it in from straight on at the backboard. What is happening right now? That didn't make any sense physically. Someone call Isaac Newton. Caleb Battle comes back at you, missed it off the window. Reynolds was fouled after the offensive rebound. And Temple is in the bonus. They'll shoot one and one. And everybody stopped because, not because they thought a foul happened. I heard a whistle, like other players heard a whistle. A step back three from the deep corner. The greatest horse shot in the history <laughs> of basketball is what we just witnessed. Dude, I think that went over the backboard. That was wild. You want to talk about two back-to-back -back unbelievable plays from Darius Johnson, who's just getting back from injury. Wow. Jamil Reynolds, UCF transfer, calm, cool, and collected in his old building. He's up to 12 points. Let's go back to that last play, see if you hear a whistle. No doubt. Oh, right? 100% <laughs> there was a whistle. 100% there was a whistle. That's not a shoe squeak. Reynolds splits him one for two. UCF. By two after the rebound by C.J. Kelly, who will break the pressure from Damian Dunn. Get the sense the pressure defensively has turned up for Temple a little bit.
Under five to shoot. Zach Hicks for three. Jamil Reynolds tried to grab the offensive rebound. Here comes Darius Johnson. C.J. Kelly to Ithiel Horton. You don't need a three here, but you've got to go. Fans here getting restless. Coming up on 20 seconds to play. La Hot Tune all alone. Darius Johnson finds him for the stuff. It's a two-point game. Might not be able to get him back in. Jordan can run the baseline. Hendricks guards the inbounder. Gets it into Caleb Battle. Immediately fouled by C.J. Kelly. One and one coming up for the Owls. Good basketball for both teams right there. Temple secures the inbounds and draws the foul. UCF, C.J. Kelly goes for the steal and foul at the same time. It's exactly what you have to do. Caleb Battle, five of five at the strike today. Came in 86%. Soft touch. 23 points for battle today. He's above 20 for the 10th time this season and 19th in his Temple career. Got them both. UCF in a hurry. In a two-score game, Darius Johnson right to the rack, doesn't get the roll. Jaleel White the rebound. Battle had it for a moment, now still does. And he'll go back to the free throw line. That was the right play to make if you're Darius Johnson. You got a full head of steam going downhill in semi-transition. Got to the rim, tried to draw a foul. No foul was called. It's a pretty good look. That's really good defense by Damian Dunn. I mean, that was really solid. Putting up a wall-type defense from Damian Dunn without fouling. Smart. Two shots for battle. That was the 10th foul against UCF. And now for UCF, you are in three mode. You, ha you have to take a three here. Johnson's back out there. He's one of the guys who can hurt you from outside. 26 for battle, one off his season high. No timeouts for UCF. Here comes Darius Johnson. Ithiel Horton, quick trigger for three. Missed everything. 
Johnson tried to track it down. Another foul. That's his fifth. He's done. And so are the Knights. The Owls will move to 5-0 on the road in American Conference play. Any noon game in conference play this late in the season is always hard, whether you're home or away. But to play a noon game on the road with, against the UCF team that's hungry for a win after losing three straight with Darius Johnson getting back into the lineup. What a gutsy, gritty road warrior win from the Temple Owls. Both streaks continue. Temple has won four in a row. UCF has dropped four in a row. The Knights to four and five in conference. Aaron McKeeson.